Okay, take two. That was not a patient, but a coworker from across the hall. How annoying. <laughs> oh, that's what I was worried about. Well, we'll try this one more time and then I'll have to probably give up. We'll see. And I realized I forgot to take my afternoon meds. So there you go. All right. Take two, let's start over. Oh, I don't know why I'm trying to do this here, but because I have so many I need to get done that I'm like, come on, I need to get it in. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, so this deck is one that I'm actually pretty excited about. I think it's going to be a, a pretty decent working deck because um, I like when decks are created by a terror user, which um, doesn't always happen. Um, a lot of times decks are created by people who are spiritual workers, kind of, but they don't have a lot of tarot experience. Uh, and so sometimes you get really pretty artwork that doesn't read very well. And I think think this deck is going to be different from that, at least most of it. So let me explain. <laughs> this deck uh, is called the Multi-Stabber Tarot. I know that's a goofy name and I can't honestly remember other than it's kind of tongue in cheek um, why it was called that. Um, this is a deck that I backed on Kickstarter. Now you all know me. Um, my Kickstarter back decks are always, um, not always, but I back a lot of decks that I really like the creator or they had a good story. And so I kind of like the story. Um, then I start to believe in the creator. Um, so this deck is actually, uh, done a lot of it is done by a woman who, uh, has passed, has, has transitioned over. In 2017, Mo Richards, uh, who was an artist and a tarot artist and, uh, you know, a, a regular print art um, woman. She was 31 and she had a, um, a, an aortic aneurysm, which means a outpouching in the major artery of her heart um, that burst. And so very often people don't even know that they're walking around with that. And then all of a sudden they just don't feel good and they're, they're gone pretty quickly. Um, so they can be very young. Uh, and she was, she was 31. Um, and she was beloved by her community. Um, so, all right. So I'm starting to wonder if I have somehow turned off there we go. Hopefully now, if you're commenting, I can see it. <laughs> I'm telling you. Uh, so uh, she had started her own tarot deck uh, and had been working on it a lot. Uh, she had finished the entire Major Arcana and the Ace and Two of every of the minor cards uh, of the suits. So ace two of all the suits are done by Mo Richards. Um, and But she died before she could finish it. And so her husband, who loved her a great deal and was also a um, tarot artist and an artist in his own right, um, got his community together and they finished the deck like in her honor, which I just thought was the greatest story, you know, I tugged at my heartstrings and I thought, well, that's a great story. I want to support this. Um, and so really, I, I probably, I don't know, if I had looked at the art and I hated the art, I might not have supported it. But those of you who know me, <laughs> no, I probably would have supported it anyways. But I actually love the art on top of it, which is nice. Um, and so they completed the art. There's, I'm trying to remember here. Hold on. I printed out some information so I could let you know. I think there's 40 other artists that collaborated with this um, to finish her deck, you know, post, what do they call it? Post-mortem. That's not what you call it. Post posthumously. I'm sure I'm not saying that right. <laughs> um, Yep, 
I'm sure it's here. Uh, her, I know her husband, Sam, did some of them. Um, they started a, um, a mission, uh, the Family Tree Clinic's mission uh, is that each individual person is, this is what she started, actually Mo started, and they contribute uh, some of the um, proceeds and they support this mission uh, in her name. Um, and the mission is that each individual person is deserving of not only high quality and affordable services, but also of affirming individualized and respectful care, no matter their income level. Mo was a staunch supporter of the Family Tree Clinic, and she strongly believed in reproductive sexual health care for all. Her legacy fund, which they started in her name, specifically covers costs of hormones for trans patients, birth control, and STI treatment medications. This deck will be displayed and available for use at Family Tree Clinic in Minneapolis, Minnesota. So I thought that was very telling of her as a person. Um, and I just am really excited that I backed this deck. I think it's really cool. Um, she had a dark sense of humor, which I happen to love. <laughs> Um, they said, and just as an example of that dark sense of humor, uh, they said she had an amazing sense of style, a wardrobe full of dark, ironic, and scathing t-shirts. Shortly after she passed, her husband, Sam, was handed that awful plastic bag with her belongings. And anybody who's ever been in this situation knows what that, that's like the stuff that, that she had on or that they give back to you. Uh, he realized that the shirt the paramedics had cut off of her in an attempt to save her life read, I hope they serve tacos in hell, in bold script. Mo's sense of humor was plain. Um, so, you know, uh, just somebody I definitely wanted to support. Uh, her Instagram page uh, is kept up as a memorial page, and her husband, Sam, uh, you know, talks about this deck and stuff on it now. Um, and it's multi-stabber underscore mo, M-O. So let's see if I can get this on here. Multi-stabber underscore mo. So just in case you want to follow her, um, there is uh, extra decks that will be going up on uh, the Etsy shop. And he has a shop that is called, what is it called? Uh, weird Punk Books, and the, the decks will be going up on that also. So in case you like this and you want a, a deck for yourself. So here is the Multi-Stabber Tarot. Uh, this is the book. It serves as a companion piece and, and was written by her husband, Sam, and uh, also by Mo because she left behind notes of, you know, what she felt about the deck and what things meant to her. Um, their introduction is here and talks about Mo's death and why they decided to continue and do this, you know, finish this deck pos posthumously. I'm never going to be able to say that right, guys. Sorry. Um, so there's four, three people in here and nobody wants to even say hello to me. Fine people. <laughs> I feel like I'm talking to myself. <laughs> which is not an unusual thing. Aha! See? Stephen came in to say hi to me, so I feel like I'm not totally crazy. Um, so she she started the, um, the animals. There's animal representations of each of the suits, which are based on elements. The wands or fire is ravens and birds. The cups are water, fish. The swords are air and the luna moth and insects, uh, and the pentacles are earth, which are, guess what they are? Squirrels and or rodents. You didn't get the notification, that's okay. Hi, Dylan. Um, so she uh, had chosen, you know, what to use for each of the suits, what animals to use for each of the suits. Um, and like I said, just for those of you who have come in, this deck was finished posthumously. 
uh, by uh, Mo Richards' husband. Mo Richard was uh, a tattoo artist in Minneapolis uh, and was 31 and uh, died of a an aortic aneurysm uh, and had started a tarot deck, uh, the multi-stabber tarot, and had finished the entire major arcana and uh, the ace two of each suit. Uh, and so her husband and like got together their whole community to finish this deck for her in her honor, which I thought was awesome. So there isn't a whole lot of notes in the book. I'm okay with that because I'm not a person who wants a whole lot of stuff in the book. Um, there is like a kind of introduction that talks about her life and, you know, what happened to her and stuff. And then each of the cards is uh, pictured here in black and white. And then they have just kind of some keywords that Mo had either written down or they had researched after her death. Um, and then... Uh, the ones when you get to the cards that are not uh, drawn by Mo, there's a little bit more interpretation here, a little bit more of, you know, the because um, they have to say who was the artist that created it. Um, and then each I love this. Each artist goes through uh, how they knew Mo. So it is truly a duck in her honor because each artist knew her and they talk about how they um, were touched by her life. So, which I didn't even know this girl and I'm already starting to cry. <laughs> but I thought what an awesome like way to honor someone is to finish their deck and talk about, um, you know, what about her inspired you? I think that's awesome. We can all only hope to be loved that much, right? So multi-stabber tarot and multi-stabber, I assume is because of her sense of humor. Apparently she was darkly funny. She was a tattoo artist and hilarious. Um, okay, so on the back it says, uh, collaboration of approximately 40 artists who came together to help complete the artistic project of the late Mo Richard who passed away August of 2017. By following Mo's initial notes, each artist brought their own aesthetic and style while staying true to the overall vision of the deck. These mystical animal-based cards are the result, which is pretty cool. It's a basic tuck box. They do have, I like when they come down so that you can grab it out. Um, for card now here's the thing for cards today i will say that these cards are probably a little bit on the thin side they remind me of like um modern spellcasters tarot or the witches tarot or so like uh us games kind of which is fine with me um i actually like that because they're easier to shuffle and I don't have a problem with that, but I know a lot of people are liking the big, thick, chunky cards now. These are not that, but they feel great. They're obviously high quality. So the back of the card is this image, which is fully reversible and beautiful, really beautiful. Um, and you can tell her art style is very tattoo art, which I really like. Tattoo art is a big thing right now. So yeah, they I I really like the art style. So here's the magician. <laughs> so cute. I love the galaxy in the background. The high priestess. Ah, oh, that's really gorgeous. I love the pomegranate. Beautiful. The Empress. With the wheat that is great and uh okay i don't i don't garden enough to know what this is called but the thing where you dig the holes when you're gardening <laughs> i know it's not a hoe <sighs> the emperor ah oh, that's gorgeous too i love the all white horns and the you know pink eyes the Billy Goat's Gruff. 
That's really gorgeous. I like that. The Hierophant. See, now this is, ah, oh, look at the um, bishop's hat, the black bishop's hat on the Hierophant. And her sense of humor, again, shows through because here we have, that's the second time I almost said it with this one. Not with this one. With this one. Nope, not that one. This one, <laughs> that it was uh, um, an inverted cross. But I thought, well, maybe it's not supposed to be that way. Nope, it definitely is with this one. That And that is purely her sense of humor. Um, that she is kind of saying, yeah, but, you know, they might be the church, but are they the end-all, be-all? Mm, maybe not. The lovers. Higher fan is cool, right? I like the color palette. I, li I like tattoo art anyways. Um, so this is a deck that I would have liked had not the great story come behind it also, but Here's the chariot. There we go. So I'm starting to learn this stupid, like how I can get things to um, focus as I have to show my face for some reason and the card. <gasps> Love the hermit. Look at him. Oh, the polar bear hermit. I love that. That's so adorable. Strength becomes fortitude. Okay, that is kind of creepy because look, all right, I know this is a rock, but it's bleeding and it's almost like a anatomical heart shaped. So isn't that interesting? that it looks like a heart problem and she died of a, an aortic aneurysm. I wonder if that was a little foreshadowing kind of stuff going on. The wheel. Yeah, right? I'm glad it's not just me because I thought, what in the world? All right, now. Why is, I think this was in the wrong order, but it's funny, they're not, they're not numbered. So I'm going to put that back in the right order because this would be eight, nine, and 10. I wonder if her husband uh, does tarot or not. Oh, look at, this is the frog and death. Is it not? Am I crazy? This deck is foreshadowing all over the damn place. It's okay, Dana. No big deal. Good. Radiation went well. Wonderful. I texted you earlier too, so don't be sorry. <laughs> justice. Ah, oh, look at the elephant of justice. I really like her artwork. The Hanged Man. Um, so I love the bat has, a, you know, a third eye. I love that. Because a lot of people with animal decks use the bat, but I haven't seen a third eye bat. Hi, Witchy in the Woods. So those of you who are just coming in, make sure, I mean, you don't have to. It's not like I can force you, but... Uh, I would definitely uh, watch the beginning of this uh, video back because uh, there's a huge story that goes behind uh, this deck. And um, the beautiful fantasy children's books, yeah. Um, this woman it was 31 and she had an, an, I can't say that fast, an aortic aneurysm and died at 31 and her husband got his community, they were tarot artists as well, and got his community together to finish her deck. She had, the, so far this is all her art. She had finished all the major arcana and up to, she did ace two of all the suit cards also. 
And then uh, she died in 2017 and they took her artwork and had all of her friends and her the terror artists that she worked with and the people who she was close to. And um, they finished her deck for her as an honor to her, which I thought was great. The devil, by the way, I know I shouldn't talk and go because then I miss stuff, but I love justice, love the hangman. This death card was awesome. I mean, really awesome, love it. Um, temperance, I have to admit that I thought the fish was throwing, and I think it is, isn't it? Is it not throwing water up into the cup? <laughs> Which, um, you know what, this deck has a huge sense of humor and I'm loving it. <laughs> um, yes, the devil card, really cool card. I love the horns and the look of the devil. I know, it is such a great way to honor her memory. Uh, yes, it is an independently produced one. It uh, came off of Kickstarter. Um, and if you want to have a deck, they, they said something in the Kickstarter campaign about Etsy, but they never referenced the Etsy shop. You can look for a uh, weird punk books. That is her husband, Sam. It's his, uh, artist page where he sells his art and they are listed there as for presale. And I'm sure as soon as they, they all come out from the Kickstarter, it will be going up for sale very soon. So what, what the heck was it? If you'd think I'd be able to remember it. I just said it literally, what, two seconds ago? Uh, Weird Punk Books, which is a square site for him. I know it's going to be up for sale there. So there's the tower card. With the raven falling. That's a gorgeous card. The star which is an albino crab pouring the water back into the river there. I love that she specifically has the crab uh, has feet in the water and some out. So, you know, in the star, there's one foot in, one foot out. Beautiful. I love this moon card. This always, ah, I just really like this card a lot. This is not one that I had seen before I got the deck. But the jellyfish underneath here, the fact that the jellyfish is underneath. Now, the moon in the background, gorgeous. The shadows that you can kind of see between and kind of not. And the fact that the jellyfish is so... Um, <sighs> no, it's not an octopus, Dana. It's a jellyfish. To me, the jellyfish is um, very out of place, like so not sure what's going on and not out of that it's upside down in the water. So, I, which I love with the moon card. What a great representation of that. Love that. The sun is a gorgeous hummingbird, which... I don't know why we don't see more hummingbirds on the sun card, right? With sunflowers. I mean, duh, that seems like perfect. And no creepy babies. I'm connecting hard with this deck. I know, Dana, me too. Now, I will tell you, it's an independently produced deck. It's it's a bit expensive. I'm not going to lie. It's To me, it was worth it because it was the story behind it was great. And this is not a deck that is going to be widely produced, you know, judgment. Uh, look at that. Oh, my goodness. That's gorgeous. Yeah, no creepy babies. Um, it's not going to be produced, um, you know, mass produced is my guess. Although it could be, you never know. It could be picked up mass produced. Um, but I would guess no. And then the world becomes the universe. How cute. Oh, I like that. Um, and so, and because it was a truly independently produced deck, to me, I don't mind paying a little bit more for that. 
Yeah, it, it really wouldn't be the same quality. So don't forget now, the, the ace and two of each suit, she also, this is still her art. Um, and then after the two of each suit, this is her friends and her artist friends and stuff have um, finished the tarot for her. Now, I did want to say, too, um, this because I loved this. I was like, I don't know why nobody thought of this before. It was Mo's vision for the Minor Arcana to show the journey of the tarot through the life cycles of different animals. In the ace cards, you'll find each creature in its embryonic state. As each suit progresses, the animal grows and finds its ultimate ultimate evolution in the court cards, which I thought, wow, what a great idea to take that each of the suits and show the journey of this each creature from embryonic to, um, you know, evolution. I love that idea. So uh, we are on, this is the wands, which is the fire suit, which is ravens and birds. So here's the raven in embryonic state. Here's the two of wands. So this will be the last wands that Mo, Mo Richards actually painted and did as a little baby here. Just starting out looking at all the opportunities in the world. Three of wands. So you'll see this is the first card that we've seen that was not uh, Mo Richards art. This is a card that one of her artist friends Right, me too. That one of her artist friends would have uh, painted. I know, I really like the idea. So there'll be different styles of art here. The four of wands. But, you know, you still get the general themes and the meaning of the deck. If you look at the four of wands, that's very four of wands. We're just seeing that progression of the little raven. Here's the five of wands, which is awesome. Oh, that's a stunning image. Um, and they do have, the book has, you know, all of the artists in there. So if, like, let's say, let's look at the five, just since we're on this card and it's gorgeous. Uh, this card was created by Marika Shanice. Artist inspiration and card design. Raven fighting patterns in nature. The five of wands shows five men, ravens, uh, fighting each other with their wands. However, there is no real contact. There seems to be no specific purpose or outcome to the chaotic scene other than to create conflict amongst the group. Each individual wears a different outfit, or in this case, different colored jewels in the wands. So if I can get that to focus, I brought my magnifying glass. There's different colors in the wands. That's awesome. Um, Marika Shanice is a Minnesota artist with a passion for animals, tiny living, dark art, and tattoos. So nice, right? I am prepared today, boy. <laughs> uh, then there's the six of wands. I love that there's different styles of art, but it's going to follow the same theme. That's gorgeous. And really talented artists that they have um, called upon to finish this deck. Here's the seven. Beautiful. Mm. Waterfalls in the background. The eight of wands. Live during the day. Yay. I walked in my path. So I'm going to take a guess here. And not that this isn't good art. It is. But you can tell that there is a, a caliber of artist that is a little different. My guess is that this person was a very good friend of Mo's. And they wanted this person to contribute. And um, so they do, you know, what they can. Uh, this was created by Shay Elliott, and it says, um, 
I tried to use as many of Mo's notes as possible. I included some vibrant colors and my own artistic touch. The Eight of Wands typically just depicts a majestic landscape, so that's what I focused on. Um, I created the Eight of Wands in the style of Zen Tangle. I don't know what that is. <laughs> I wanted the water to have movement and life. And I wanted the land to feel alive. The mountains provide strong stability in the background and the sun is bright and illuminating the sky. The wands are suspended in the air, deriving strength from the sun. Uh, Shay Elliott is a special education teacher by day and a creator, drawing, painting, sewing, crafting by night. Oops, she is an artist. Sorry, I didn't mean that. It, it's just a different kind of style than the rest of the art, right? Uh, Shay has a partner and a beloved dog as a cousin of Mo and and the memory of her spirit. She keeps keeps Shay rooted in appreciation and gratitude for the people and experiences in Shay's life. See, so she was close to her. And that's the impression that I got. I don't know why. Maybe I just felt that. I don't know. Here's the nine. Oh, look at that. Oh, my goodness. That is a gorgeous image. Wow. Whoo, that's a powerful ass image. Really beautiful. Uh, and then the 10. Wow. Because you know everything. No one can hide anything from you. <laughs> well, you can try. And then we go through the page. Oh, that's beautiful, too. Wow, what a gorgeous set of cards. Really stunning. Here is the knight. So now don't forget some of these. They don't have to go through the raven necessarily. Um, so some of them have incorporated a different bird. But the knight of wands. The queen of wands. Oh, my goodness, which is gorgeous. These cards are just stunning. And finally, coming to their ultimate evolutionary existence with the king. Whew, which is powerful. Really gorgeous. Love it. Damn it, man. Hopefully I'm back. I'll wait till you guys say for sure that I'm back. I am at work, which means awful internet. Okay. So the first two cards, um, Mo had painted herself. And so the uh, cups are fish. And don't forget, they uh, love this idea that the journey of the tarot in the minor arcana uh, go through the life cycles of the different animals. In the ace cards, you find each creature in its embryonic state. And as the suit progresses, the animal grows and finds its ultimate evolution in the court cards. Yeah, really. So here is a fish in the embryonic state. What a beautiful ace of cups. Here's the two of cups. Gorgeous. What a great idea. That's almost like... It's hard to tell because of the leaf here, but it's almost like, um, you know, twin embryos that have just come out and are just separating, right? They mirror each other. It's beautiful. The three of cups. <laughs> How cute. <laughs> They definitely are playing together, aren't they? I love it. Here is the Four of Cups. And again, with these minor arcana ones, once we get past the two, these cards, because they were not um, painted by Mo, they have a lot more information. So any of these, like, I'll be honest with you, this one is neat, but I don't, see a whole lot of four of cups in there. So for me, I'm going to have to look at the book, but I bet you it'll be just fine. You know, I have a feeling that I'll totally understand what they were going for. If I can read it. 
Um, Mo would draw hands with too many fingers. She shared with me that she would start drawing the hand and the fingers would just keep going and going. I designed the fish to interlock using lines mirroring parts of fish to give the impression that there are more fish than there are. I drew the fish and the fins would just keep going and going like there are a few too many for the card. Um, so I, I can get that boredom, depression, kind of, you know, feeling disjointed. I totally get that now that I've read it. Um, it makes perfect sense to me now. And like I said, because the um, ones that Mo didn't paint, they have more information on there so you can get it. Five of Cups. That is neat. That almost looks like pointillism. It's not. But I like that style a lot. Six of Cups. Very different style of art. Again, I really like that. Really interesting. And I like, you know, for the Six of Cups, which now we're talking about, you know, childhood and I'm um, looking at things through, through innocent eyes and uh, looking back to your past childhood and stuff. That totally looks like, uh, you know, a different sense of the universe. Seven. There are around 40. Um, I don't know if they say exactly. They say like around 40. Uh, the major arcana and the ace and two of the minor arcana of each suit uh, was all done by Mo before she died. And then the rest of them, uh, oh my goodness. That is, I don't know, let's see if you can see this. Where's my magnifying glass? Um, that is, what do you call it? Where you do it in string. Uh, um, hi, 54. Um, 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 embroidery? It's all string. Yeah, creepy fish off Finding Nemo, right? It's all string. I don't know if you can tell that. You can kind of in the mountains there. How cool though that they did a whole embroidered card. As a matter of fact, you know there's an embroidery tarot coming out. So yeah, I don't do embroidery either. <laughs> but there's there that's really talented to do that whole thing. Uh, here's the nine of cups. That is a beautiful Nine of Cups. Gorgeous. Oh, beautiful. Here is the Ten. How pretty. Uh, and then we're going to coming into the, the greatest evolution of this fish, right? Here's the page. Oh, that's a pretty card. Look at the eyes. Oh, I like that. Wow, I really like that. What an interesting card. Very mesmerizing, right? Oh, I like that card. Here's the Knight of Cups. Love it. Look at the salmon. Ah. Love that. The Queen of Cups. <laughs> oh, I'm going to have to look up and remember what the hell that fish is called. It's not a jellyfish. It's, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to look it up. I like it. And, uh-oh, Dana, this is an octopus. I know you're afraid of octopi. Which is hilarious. I mean, not hilarious. If you're really afraid, I don't mean to. Um, but um, <laughs> I I love octopus. They are so intelligent. They are highly intelligent beings, and um, they 
feel emotional and spiritual energy from people. I love octopi. Like I would love to have an octopi, <laughs> but I know you don't like them. <laughs> All right, so swords. Uh, swords are air, which is uh, luna moth and insects. So we're starting in the embryonic state of the ace of swords. The embryonic state of luna moths is just the eggs here. That's all you're seeing. So this again, this is a, a card painted by Mo, Mo Richards. And so is the two, which is stunning. I love that. So, of course, the Luna Moth, you get the um, Luna Caterpillar here. The Luna, what are they? It's not a, is it a Caterpillar? Luna, I can't remember. But I, they're gorgeous, right? I always think of the bug's life. And it's a beautiful, beautiful card. So here we have the three of swords, right? The moon, gorgeous. And the Four of Swords. Oh, I almost didn't see the moth. I'm like, okay, isn't that a leaf? How is that the moth? Because <laughs> it's up here. So it's resting. I love that card. It's like, this is what you're going to become. I love that. Wow. <laughs> Okay, so Stephen, this is the Five of Swords, and I think you pulled the Five of Swords earlier this week, and I feel like you maybe had to have this deck because of what that card meant to you. <laughs> oh my goodness, this is hilarious. Is that a uterus? It is. This is a uterus stabbing the shit out of this guy. <laughs> oh, yes. The back of the deck is awesome, too. Look, at, do you see the uterus over here? The uterus sword stabbing the shit out of the guy. I, this is hilarious. I really like some of the humor in this deck. <laughs> I totally get it because, yes, I am that dark. I think that's awesome. <laughs> yes, that's how it made me feel. <laughs> Poor Steven. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that is quite a card. Oh, that's gorgeous. I love, look at the six. Oh my. That looks like a Pixar film to me. With the leaf and the, the moths drawn to the moon. Oh, that's so pretty. I adore that one. Really gorgeous. Uh, seven of Swords. That's great. Hi, Thomas. I don't know why I almost just called you Trevor. So, all right. Do you see moths? I don't see insects or moths on this one. Which kind of makes me laugh because I feel like this artist, whoever this artist was, was like, yep, you guys can say what the theme is uh, all you want, but I'm going to do what I want to do with it. <laughs> Which I kind of like that. But now I want to know what the hell he was thinking. Ah, I passed it. Hang on. I can only do this with one hand. It's not easy. Okay, created by Matt Wells. I had very little background knowledge in tarot, so I was excited to illustrate it in my own style, but in a way that functioned well for the set. I wanted to make something that would be good enough for Mo to approve. The challenge for me was to convey some ethical ambiguity, suspicion, and a sense of open-ended possibility. Caution and mischief, but, but also the potential for something different. The chimpanzee is a complex social animal. I feel can live in that kind of space. Yeah, so he doesn't say anything about the fact that it's supposed to be like an insect or a moth. He was just like, yep, this is what I'm doing. 
But I like that because it's um, kind of funny to be right in the middle of the swords cards there. Really cute. <sighs> All right. Eight of swords. Oh, that's a scary looking eight, boy. Wow. I like moths a lot, but that is a freaky looking moth. Woo-wee. Look at that bad boy. Wow. Yeah, looks like a graveyard scene. Absolutely, I agree. Oh, that's creepy. That's a good one. I like it. Here is the... Oh. You're not supposed to stab them yet. Here's the Nine of Swords, um, which and maybe this is a dream state because usually it's fears and it's not actual fears of, you know, not, they're not coming to fruition. But he's actually stabbed through one of the stories, swords has, has stabbed him. So, but if you look at the whole card as a whole, it kind of looks like a dream state, right? Like it's not reality. So I'm going to go with that when I'm reading. And the Ten of Swords. That is different. <laughs> so I believe that's a dead moth. And he's being stabbed by all these bones. Oh, oh, this is horrible. I'm totally going to cry. First of all, <clears throat> all right, here we go. Here's the story. This is created by her husband, Sam. <sighs> okay. He says, I needed to do this card. The inspiration was found the moment Mo died. This card has been my favorite for a long time, but in widowerhood, I have come to understand it on an entirely new level. The type of illumination you never want anyone to have. It's the end of all things. It's the wealth you're fucked card. Literally the lowest point. This card was done as a 3D collage where I used foam board and single ply cardboard to create different layers. To keep with a more natural aesthetic, I used bones as the swords. As everything else I tried didn't look quite right. The moth is in the photo I used is also dead, with some of its innards exposed, which I thought it was a more interesting look. Ooh. So this is him without his wife. That does it for me. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. You can feel that pain. Yep. Okay. Good job with the pain. Next. <laughs> yeah. It's getting there. That was good. <clears throat> Page of Swords. Let's move on before I start blubbering. Ah, <sighs> that's gorgeous. Ah, oh, look at he is holding. I love that Page of Swords with the lunar um, aspects, all the um, the different phases of the moon up above. That's really pretty. I like that. Gorgeous Knight of Swords. Uh, it incorporates the death card. You guys remember, if some of you weren't here, let me pull the death card for you real quick. Because there it is again. So it's like now you have learned to ride and control the death. That's what I see in that. That's pretty cool. I like it. Queen of Swords. 
here we are coming to the ultimate uh, evolution of the butterfly here or the moth. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. And the king of swords. Oh, look at him. That's truly beautiful, too. Love it. Love it. Okay, one last suit, which is, of course, is going to be my favorite suit of this deck because it's the pentacle suit, which is notoriously my least favorite suit. But she changed that because the pentacles here are squirrels. For 90% of these cards, they are squirrels. Yay! Okay, so in the embryonic phase, here is the little embryonic squirrel in mama's belly. <laughs> and don't forget the ace and two, these are drawn by Mo. Um, it's ugh, so sad now. I'm mean, gonna I have to read the book because my guess is this is the card she was working on when she died and they left it as is. This is my guess. Oh, see, can you see through that? <sighs> but you can see the idea that she had for it. Um, created by Mo Richard, this card was unfinished at the time of her death. Death. At the time of her death. Oh, now I can't speak. Yes. Yeah, so, but you can see the vision she had for the card. And I agree. I'm glad they didn't finish this one. This was like, you know, the unfinished work. Uh, to me, I have no problem at all with the fact that they didn't finish that. That's the card she was working on. I think that's great. So then, whoo, whoo, that's an interesting looking card. Here is the three. Okay, come on. You know you want to do this. <laughs> Hold on, somebody's messaging me. There we go, maybe, yes. Okay, here's the three of pentacles. And boy, I love the, I do too, and the interworking. So you see the skull, but then you see, see the squirrel, his little ears here, and it goes through. Yeah, right? I know, walking my path, I'm falling apart. <laughs> and I didn't know Mo, but I feel like I can see her vision through this deck, so... You know, I hope at some point they watch this, uh, her husband and the creators, the co-creators, and know that um, you did a good job. You uh, showed the vision that she had for life and for tarot, and you honored her well. I love that for, oh my goodness, that is so cute. I love his nuts. <laughs> oh, that's adorable. Oh, the five of pentacles. Oh, look at out in the rain. That's gorgeous. Beautiful. That's a gorgeous five of pentacles. I love it. The six. Oh, these are great. This suit, of course, is the best suit of the deck. Gorgeous. Seven. Obviously. It's a great, great card. We're almost done. Oh my goodness. Who is this artist? Because they are spectacular. Here is the Eight of Pentacles. Hold on. Let me get this. Because you really need to see this. Wow. Just wow. The detail work on this is stunning. The all the details on his little fur and each hair and the, the wheat. Really gorgeous. Really gorgeous. Whew. 
Yeah, his ear hairs, exactly. Nine of Pentacles. Love it. Oh, lovely. I have no idea, Hexen. I'm on live, though. I'll be there in a minute. I'll deal with it in a minute. <laughs> Ten of Pentacles. What a cute card that is. There's a squirrel for every style. I know, right? That's a super cute card. Now we have the page. So they this is where they went to some other rodents. Apparently they couldn't get all squirrels in there. Fine. <laughs> it does feel like a story for sure. The Knight of Pentacles. I love this one. This one reminds me of The Secret of Nim. I don't know if you've all ever seen The Secret of Nim, but that was one of my favorite cartoons as a kid. Um, if you know any of my other favorite cartoons, you will realize that I was kind of a different kid. Uh, I liked spooky, scary, creepy. Um, you know, The Secret of Nim was a scary cartoon. Uh, the um, Dark Crystal, scary, you know, never ending story, scary, creepy. Yep, that was me. <laughs> Queen of Pentacles. So uh, the beaver for the queen, that's cute. And finally, oh, I love this. Even though it's not a squirrel, the king of pentacles. That's a beautiful card. Boy, doesn't that look um, very Rider Waite, that castle in the background. Hang on, look at the Rider Waite castles in the background. What is that called? I want to say kookaburro, but is that it? It's, I know it's a, uh, shit, is it a kookaburra? <laughs> Love the never ending story. Labyrinth, yes. Capybara, thank you. Never ending story, yes. Capybara, I knew it was close. <laughs> but with a very Rider Waite castle at the end. Um, yeah, right, I know. I Never ending story, dark crystal, all labyrinth, all those dark ass movie. Uh, that's what I liked to watch. Oh, um, the Hobbit movie, the original Hobbit movie that was a cartoon. Oh my God, that is so dark. But that, you know, and the um, Lord of the Rings movie um, where they sang uh, If There's a Whip, There's a Way. If there's a whip, there's a way. Yep. Uh-huh. Long, long time ago, let me tell you. <laughs> Okay, so uh, multi-stabber tarot. You guys, I, this deck is uh, has exceeded my expectations. Um, of course, pulled at my heartstrings, but I love the artwork. I love Mo's artwork. I love that you can tell her sense of humor and her zest for life. Because um, one bit me at the zoo. I thought you, like, I skipped over that the first time and thought it just said, like, because you saw one at the zoo, or I don't know what I thought you said, but I missed that one bit you. That's horrible. Um, you can see that uh, she had a zest for life, and, and I'm so glad that they took up her mantle of the tarot deck that she didn't get to finish and finished it for her. Ooh, you had lettuce, and they, she, they ate it too quick and tried to gobble up your finger. Ouch, I bet you that really hurt. Uh, so you can find this deck, uh, at least the pre-order, I believe, for it uh, on Weird Punk Books uh, site, which is a square site. So if you look up Weird, Weird Punk Books, her husband, Sam, that's his site where he sells uh, his art. And at the bottom, it talks about the multi-stabber tarot. Uh, and then at some point it'll be on Etsy. If I can get that Etsy page, I will link that in the down bar below. Um, but I, I think this is definitely a deck that is worth uh, taking a second look at. Like I said, I know it's a little bit more expensive than some of the decks that are out there. It's never going to be, um, you know, like a mass produced kind of deck. Well, again, I shouldn't say that, but um, 
it is a gorgeous deck and I can see the visionary process to it. And I really like the idea of the minor arcana and um, Mo's art is incredible. So I'm so glad you guys could join me in the middle of the afternoon. Um, I got two unboxings done today, which is good. I still have a couple to do. I still have my vendor deck to do. And I still have at least one or two decks at home too. I'm trying to get through them this weekend. <laughs> So I hope you guys all have a great day and we will see you uh, tonight probably.